Dates of the Deportations from Jerusalem Why They Matter Invading forces have captured the city of Jerusalem at least 22 times over the past three millennia. The deportations from Jerusalem to Babylon help explain the following biblical themes. Which are the ten lost tribes of Israel? The precision of prophetic chronology. The starting and ending dates of Daniel's 490-year prediction. The historical arrival of Israel's promised Messiah and why many believe that Jesus could return sometime soon. In 975 BCE, the nation of Israel split in two, becoming a northern kingdom called Israel and a southern one called Judah, ruled by the house of David. Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. In 721, because of widespread worship of foreign gods, Yahweh allowed the Assyrian army to invade Israel and deport its population. Those ten tribes never returned. Shalmanzer king of Assyria came up against Samaria and besieged it, and at the end of three years he took it. The king of Assyria carried the Israelites away to Assyria. In the following century, the prophet Jeremiah forewarned Judah and nearby nations that they would serve the king of Babylon for seventy years. Because you have not obeyed my words, behold, I will send for all the tribes of the north, declares the Lord, and for Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and against all these surrounding nations. This whole land shall become a ruin and a waste, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Thus in year 605, Yahweh allowed the Babylonian army to invade Judah, to confiscate its treasury, and to deport some of its nobility. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel. Next in 597, the Babylonians returned to Judah, collected tribute, took the king captive, and deported many Judeans. In the seventh year, in the month of Kislev, the king of Akkad must and his troops, marched to the Hatti land, and encamped against the city of Judah and on the ninth day of the month of Adar he seized the city and captured the king. He appointed there a king of his own choice and taking heavy tribute brought it back to Babylon. Lastly, in 586, the Babylonians destroyed the Jerusalem temple, tore down the city walls, and deported most of its population to Babylon. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem. And he burned the house of the Lord broke down the walls around Jerusalem. And the rest of the people Nebuzaradan the captain of the guard carried into exile. Thus Judah served the kings of Babylon for seventy years, until the Medes and the Persians captured Babylon in 539. That very night Belshazzar the Chaldean king was killed. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about sixty-two years old. Daniel, a counselor to the king of Babylonia, was reading the prediction made by Jeremiah. In the first year of Darius, I, Daniel, 
perceived in the books the number of years that, according to the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet, must pass before the end of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely, seventy years. Around the year 539, Yahweh revealed to Daniel that a Messiah would come some 490 years following a decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Seventy weeks are decreed about your people and your holy city. From the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Then for sixty-two weeks it shall be built again. In 538, Persian King Cyrus the Great allowed captive populations to return to their homeland. Jews were allowed to return to Jerusalem, but not to restore the city walls. In the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia. Go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. But in 458, Persian king Artaxerxes financed Ezra to return to Jerusalem, where he undertook to rebuild the city walls. Artaxerxes, king of kings, to Ezra the priest, I make a decree that any one of the people of Israel or their priests or Levites in my kingdom, who freely offers to go to Jerusalem, may go. Whatever seems good to you and your brothers to do with the rest of the silver and gold, you may do out of the king's treasury. The wall was finished on the twenty-fifth day of the month Ilul, in fifty-two days. Calculating seventy weeks of years, starting at year 458, one arrives at 33 CE, the latest year in which Jesus Christ could have been crucified and risen back to life. Nero substituted as culprits and punished in the most unusual ways those hated for their shameful acts whom the crowd called Christians. The founder of this name, Christ, had been executed in the reign of Tiberius by the procurator Pontius Pilate. In that same year, Jesus foretold that invading armies would destroy Jerusalem again during the lifetime of his hearers. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. This came to pass in the year 70 CE. Now as soon as the army had no more people to slay or to plunder, because there remained none to be the objects of their fury, for they would not have spared any, had there remained any other work to be done, Caesar gave orders that they should now demolish the entire city and temple. With the establishment of a state of Israel in 1948, the acquisition of Jerusalem in 1967, the government's declaration of Jerusalem as the nation's capital in 1980, and the moving of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem in 2018, the 70th anniversary of the Jewish state, some prophecy buffs feel that Jesus may return soon. Perhaps by the year 2033, the 2000th anniversary of his crucifixion and resurrection.